Hello everybody, uh, my name is Lucas Hicks and I'm going to be doing my video on Unit 1, Objective 2, Average Velocity. Um, so the, the problem is the position of an object moving along a line is given by the function s of t equals negative 4.9 t to the second plus 28t plus 20. And find the average velocity of the object over the following intervals. And those are the intervals. So if we, if we think about this function graphically, we can actually see that right here. Hopefully it will show up. Oh, there we go. Um, see that function graphically. You can imagine your, your y-axis as, y -axis as the, um, the speed of, of an object and then sort of your, your x-axis as time. So if you imagine an object is, is starting out fairly slow and then it speeds up, gets faster and faster, and then it goes down, and then as soon as it gets to the bottom where it's stuck. I was interrupted there, had to stop the video. So uh, I wrote some of this out already. In order to find this out, you have to use the, the formula for the average velocity, which is that right, that, that top part right there. Um, S of B minus S of A divided by B minus A, where your, your interval is A, B. So if this is your interval, uh, the 0 would be the A and the 7 would be the B. So you basically just put that in the function, the function of that number minus the function of that number. So there it is. So if we plug that number in, this is the, the long, drawn-out thing that we get. And that will equal the, the average velocity of that, oh my goodness, my hands are shaky, of that, that interval. And so we can imagine that as, as you're picking a point, somewhere down here would be 7, and you're wanting to find the average velocity of that. And so that's, that would be your secant line. You know, two points there would be your secant line. And then what, you, what you're able to do with, with doing this through several different um, intervals, slowly getting closer and closer to a specific number, is you could actually find the instantaneous velocity. We learned that later on in the, the chapters. So basically that's that secant line is just getting closer, closer and closer and closer to just touching that, um, that, that line at one point. That would be your instantaneous velocity. And so that's why this is very helpful. But this right here, this is very long and, and just, just painstaking to, to try to fill it all out. I went ahead and solved it all. And what you end up with, with the, um, for the interval um, of, of, of 0, 7, is an answer of negative 3 point, or, or negative, negative 6.3. I had a little dyslexia there. Uh, the average velocity being negative 6.3, and you could put that as feet per second or, or whatever. Uh, depending on, on, on what it said, it doesn't say anything up here, but you could do that. Or you can actually put in this right here. This is 0 um, h. And what you're able to do with h is actually come up with a separate formula altogether, a separate formula that is specific for this particular um, function. So if you plug in h, now I went ahead and, and here you know, I knew that the answer of, of that same 0 would, would be 20, so I just went ahead and wrote 20 there. You, you solve it out, and what you're going to end up with is this thing right here, negative 4.9 of h plus 28. That's, that's a lot more simple. See if we can get that focus. There we go. That's a, that's a lot more simple than that right there. And so if we plug in those same intervals, 7 for h, we can go ahead and type that in on the calculator. Negative 4.9. 7 plus 28, there you go, is equal to negative 6.3. You can actually do that for each of these intervals, and it's going to give you the exact same answer as if you were to solve it out this way. So I went ahead and, and solved all of them out. Here's the intervals right here. So um, for, for, for 0, 7, negative 6.3, um, 0, 6, negative 1.4, 0, 5, 3.5. So it's getting, it's getting larger and larger as the closer we get to a smaller number. Um, and then, of course, you have your, 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 that interval, the 0, H. That's, that's the answer, but that's basically sort of a cheat sheet to, to doing a whole bunch of them, a whole bunch of these inter intervals. And so um, we, we would be able to calculate, you know, if these were getting closer and closer to... Um, some number, we could we could sort of look at 
where this is heading, going from a, a negative number, you know, a little bit larger, a little bit larger, um, and I imagine if if you if you were to put these all the way to either zero or whatever, you you would see exactly where they're going to, and you would be able to to calculate that instantaneous velocity, and so that's that's very helpful for for a lot of different things, um, but but there you go that's that's how you calculate the average velocity over an interval. Thank you.